we'll, we'll get going here. I was asked to speak about driver recruiting, and I have to tell you, we do a lot of recruiting programs for uh, motor coach companies. That's one of the areas that, that my organization works in. Um, so I'm going to give you a lot of, of examples and talk about a lot of things. I've been visiting motor coach companies either as vice president of trailways or, or in my role now uh, of having my own consulting company. My associates and I have been out visiting hundreds of bus companies. I'm going to give you a lot of examples today and, uh, and with that um, I won't use company names. You may think you know who it is, but I can probably tell you it won't be who you think it is. Um, so, as much as the, like the TV commercial that's out there um, about the credit card and they have Captain Obvious, uh, there's going to be things that I tell you that I know many of you go, oh, duh, that's for sure, except for the fact that what I point out is things that I've seen. So. Uh, so, the number one thing about recruiting is stop recruiting and start retaining. We had one of our clients, we actually recruited 60 brand new drivers in a year for this company, which is not a bad number of, of bringing in fresh drivers. And they were upset because their numbers didn't seem to increase. You've been doing this for a year and our numbers are, are not going up very much. Well, it's because as many as we're bringing in the front door, you're losing out the back door. And we did a full report on those 60, over 50 of them were still there a year later. The problems they were having were the people of two, three, and five years that were leaving. When we do our uh, on-phone interviews with folks, we say to them, so what are you looking for in a bus company? The very first thing almost always is a sense of belonging, a sense of family, a sense of being important with the company. The second thing is a sense of fairness, that their the dispatch system isn't working against them, that there's actually a sense of fairness and dispatch. And pay is really number three or more down the list. People, I know, I hear about all oh, those divers will they'll jump ship for 50 cents more someplace else. That's not the reason they're quitting. It may be the reason they're telling you, but they're telling us something different. And so when I say step one to, to retention is you need to become a consultant. You need to do what I do uh, when I'm out there visiting bus companies. Be your own consultant. And if not, hire a consultant. Pick me, but uh, you know, it's cheaper if you just do what I'm going to tell you to do, what I do every day. I want you to look and listen, and then I want you to listen some more. Defense is something that we play in football, but not in business management. Catching is. But listen. Don't be defensive. When somebody says, I want this, or we have trouble with that, don't say, yeah, but, because the first time you say, yeah, but, it pretty well gets around the company that nobody cares what I say, because they always have a defense. So try and train your managers, listen to yourself, and, and listen. Don't come back with an answer, yes, but, oh, if you only knew how much. Just listen. Look in your driver room. First off, do you have a driver room? I mentioned that uh, last night to one of the manufacturer's reps, and he, he agreed with me that he's surprised how many there are no driver rooms. But if there is a driver room, what does it look like? When I come to visit a company, and I have a couple of minutes before my meeting starts, I try and see the driver room. And when I walk into the driver room, it tells me one of two things about the company. The one I walk into, and it has a wall of letters saying, Congratulations on your driver, and we really enjoyed your driver. And boy, this driver was great. And they're posted there. Or do I walk in and says, Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't park here, don't leave your car doing this. You know, it tells me what kind of a company that I'm going to be talking to. 
And by the way, the ones that don't do this don't do, are usually about five years old memo-wise. So, what are you doing with social media? This is huge. What are you doing? What are your drivers doing? What's going on in your mind? There's a lot of owners and a lot of companies that are like, Facebook, I couldn't get on it if I had to. Well, you have to. There are, these are just a couple of the driver-related groups. Professional motor coach operators have 2.2 thousand members in that driver group. Tour bus drivers, 3.2 thousand members in that driver group. That's a lot of people to be either recruiting from or having your drivers talking against you. Motor coach operators, 4.1 thousand. And if you haven't been there and if you haven't been paying attention once in the morning or once at night, just read through these, you can become a member. It's really not difficult. Here's a question that comes up. How many companies pay $12 an hour or less? And there's all kinds of, of comments. One of them being, that's a joke. And this driver's getting paid $20 an hour uh, plus pre-trip travel time tips. And it goes on and on. There were a bunch of comments on that one. And if nothing else, you're going to find out what some of the other folks are paying or what maybe your drivers are saying. So it's there, it's open, and you can see what's being said. Look at it. Look and read. Yes, Sherry. Can I get a question quick? Is that like a group in face? Could you yes. Go back to that? Yes. 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 So the professional more for drivers, that's a group that someone started? Yes. Yeah. And there are like groups of that. These drivers are belonging to that group. Yes. Well, there's, 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 tour bus drivers in America, that's another one? That's another one. Tour bus drivers, professional motor coach operators is another one. I am in 20 groups that are bus related. There are 20, and I know there's probably more. I keep finding, there's uh, line run operators. There are um, bus nuts, of course, I belong to that. Um, there are just... Like I said, I belong to 20 different groups, and it doesn't take me long, uh, once in the morning before I start my day and once at night before I end, just a quick scroll through, uh, finding out what's being said. I know more about some of your companies than maybe you do because of the stuff of just reading what the drivers are saying, what they're saying about you, what they're saying about, um, about themselves and their company and their dispatchers and all of this stuff. And and you, there's nothing will stop you from, uh, yes, it's a closed group. That just means you have to say, I'd like to join. And, and someone says, you have, I'd like to join, and boom, you're basically in. So the hard part is just finding it. But it's not that difficult. It really isn't. So you can look for that and then become there. Um, and you'll, you'll see and hear people say, well, yeah, over in tour operators, they were saying, or over in line one operators, there was discussion. So I go look it up and, and join that group. And, and I'm, like I said, I don't spend all day on Facebook. I just, it doesn't take long to quickly scan through. So look at social media. Uh, you'll see sometimes drivers videoing uh, as they're driving. Uh, all kinds of, it's just amazing what people say and do on there. So look at what's, and your customers are out there too on social media. So you can do a search, by the way, um, if you'll notice, uh oh, I got my pointer. Up there above the Kabbalah bus, it says motor coach, you can just see motor coach. Next to that says search. Just put your company name and search and see what comes up there. Uh, and it will, it will bring up just the posts that are related to you. So you can search on these boxes. Um, and you can search on Facebook in general. Just put your company name in the search box. And maybe you have customers that are complaining there. Other people are using this to see what's going on with your company. When's the last time that you Googled your business name? 
There's another one called Glassdoor.com. Glassdoor is where folks go to see what it's like to work for you. So you may want to go there and see what people are writing about what it is to work for your organization because they're going to go there to see do I want to work there or not, depending on the, co uh, on the comments. Use Yelp. Go in there and look. And if you do have uh, drivers that come to you saying, I really, really like working here. Thank you. I you know that probably doesn't happen exactly every day, but sometimes they do. Um, if they do say that, you can ask them, if you really, really feel that way, would you mind dropping a note in Facebook or would you mind dropping a note under Yelp or a note under Glassdoor? It would help us get better people like you to be in this part of this organization. If we get some good positive comments like you have, you, I appreciate you telling me, let's tell the world that working here isn't such a bad place to work. Listen to what's happening in operations. Had a uh, company that we were recruiting for, and uh, the driver went in for their internal, uh, you know, we do a phone interview and kind of whittle down the people that we think will make or not make it. Uh, so this, this particular driver had everything we thought the company needed, and they set up a, an internal interview. Driver went in, the person um, uh, behind the desk said, what are you here for? Uh, driver So I, I have a driver interview. And she said, well, sit over there and somebody will be with you. And he said, for the next half hour, he sat there, no one talked to him. And during that 30 minutes, he heard operations talking about this darn driver, and that darn driver, and, and I can't believe, and he listened for about a half hour and he says, I don't want to work there because the way that they bicker and the internal things going on and, and the way operations talked about the, the drivers, he says, I didn't want to be a part of that organization. He got up and left after 30 minutes. So, which I, I would have left after 30 minutes just not being talked to, but the fact that he heard all of that. The biggest thing that we hear when we do driver recruiting is dispatch isn't fair to me. Now, I've been there. I've been a dispatcher. I know how difficult it can be. You've got to keep everybody happy. But I also have been in organizations, and I've seen how they do dispatch. I've seen where they hire drivers, and then they sit as a new driver for up to a couple weeks of not being used. And there's no reason you can't, on a three-bus move, put the new person in the middle of a three-bus move. Find work for them somehow. Get them working or you're going to end up losing them out the back door. How is dispatch using these folks that are new? And is it being unfair, on the other hand, to the people of, that have been loyal to you? It's a fine line, but what's going on? Because I'll tell you, back in those groups and telling us as recruiters, this is what they're telling us. And usually it comes down to the fairness of how operations work. You need to know exactly if they're not favoritism or not. And, uh, know when and how your new drivers are being put to work because they know and they're going to tell others. So, Have a driver council and listen to them. Oh, I can't do that. It's just too busy. There's just too much going on. You want me to pull drivers in and sit down and do all that? Well, maybe, like at the PGA tournament here in St. Louis, how many of you went out and spent time with the drivers at that event? How, many, how long did you stay? How many of you had donuts and coffee before they left the yard in the morning? Um, there's things of that type where you can have a so-called driver council and sit down and listen to the driver and get their feedback and spend some time with them, uh, listening and, and thanking them and being there with them. You, you know, I mean, I know of companies that actually the owner drives as part of that group just to be a part of that group. Not everybody can and will do that, and that's fully understandable. But you could at least go to these big events that you're at where you have five, six, eight drivers and just be there with them or be there when they pull out in the morning. Listen to your office discussions. How are people welcomed? Uh, what does your staff talk openly about? I went into a company 
Um, and I also heard those kinds of discussions going in at this one uh, company. And I mentioned to the owner, I said, you know, I walked in, and of course, I tend to wear a suit, and the first thing the person who welcomed me was, we have a no solicitation policy, you should know that up front. Uh, I have an appointment, and I'm not selling anything? Okay, have a seat. Now, if I'm being welcomed like that, what's going on with others that are coming into your office? And so I mentioned that to the, to the uh, person, and now that was Matilda, and she's been here for 20 years, and we all understand that's just the way she is, and we all get a chuckle out of her, and I'll tell you what, she does, uh, she does keep the salespeople out of here. Well, good, but not really, you know. Uh, sometimes people show up in suits who have an appointment, and they have a reason, and, and some of your new driver recruits may actually show up in a tie, and they shouldn't be treated like they shouldn't be there. So, know what's going on at your office. How does your training program for new drivers work? Are your company using the Charlie method? Oh, yeah. Um, you go with Charlie, and he'll teach you all the paperwork and how to do stuff. And that's the training. And I can't tell you the number of people and the number of companies that have the Charlie method for training. Go spend time with Charlie, he'll teach you the ropes. Well, Charlie is the one who also says, um, you gotta go back to the back of the garage and that's where the blinker juice is at, you know? Uh, or um, the headlight juice is running out on that bus, so, so go over there. Uh, some of these guys get their jollies. Do you know that or not? Onboarding is not something we do with passengers. Onboarding is what we do with our new employees. Again, this should be Captain Obvious stuff. But I can't tell you the number of times, just as a consultant, I've gone in, and I'm going to spend more than a few weeks. And they've said, oh yeah, we've got an office, it's, it's over here. And you're, you're welcome to set up in there. And you walk in and there's stuff on the desk. And there's no operating phone. And I spent time in those same operations, and you know, think, okay, well, I'm just a consultant. But then I watch them bringing in a brand new employee, whether it's an accounting or HR or wherever it is, and they have the same issue. There's no sign that says, "Welcome, Miss Jones. We appreciate your first day of work with our organization." It doesn't take much to do that. And then have a desk that's clear, a computer. They're going to be there. You might as well have the computer there, might as well have it worked by IT to have the information ready, uh, have their email address ready, have their sign-in ready, um, have their key ready. So there, I actually have witnessed people going two and three days without a key to get in and out of the office. Really? I mean, welcome them. And it's not just them, but of course it's the drivers. What tends to be a company-wide philosophy. If they're doing that to the drivers, they tend to do it to anybody that walks through. Just get a seat, we'll get up, we'll catch up with you. There is an onboarding process, and the more you make that person, whoever it is, accounting, human resources, sales, or driver, make them feel welcome, they're going to stay. Catching can be a good thing. You know, we all have, or most of us have, onboard cameras, and uh, different things. Um, when we're trying to catch that driver who's talking on their cell phone, or we're trying to catch that driver that stops too, diff uh, too hard, or we're trying to catch that driver that turns and everybody swings in their seat. But let's catch some of these guys doing something good so that they don't react negatively to the cameras. When they do get out of the bus and, and, uh, and you see it on the camera that they're welcoming people, um, and when you see them doing a right, the, the proper pre-trip. I went to a company one time, I parked my car, and had to walk through the bus yard to get to the main office for my appointment. On the ground, in shorts and a t-shirt, guy was, first off, you could tell the, 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 the wheels had tire uh, armor, uh, armor all on him, and he was sitting there polishing the rims. And I was just like, whoa. And, and I said, so are you in maintenance? And he says, no, 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 I'm a driver. I have a tour coming up tomorrow. And I always like to take my bus and, and uh, be, 
have a good first impression for my tour group. So I, I always come in a day ahead and get my bus ready for my tour. I said, that is amazing. That's really, really good. I went into the office, did the pleasantries, and I says, I can't believe you have drivers that, that you know, this Mr. Smith was out there polishing his wheels. And the owner said to me, well, yeah, it, what, that's what's expected. They're just supposed to, it's part of what they do. I said, but does he get paid? And he said, no. He just, you know. I said, so do you have a reward program? He said, no. Why? You need to reward stuff like that. Catch them doing something good and, and thank them. And maybe it's only a $10 Starbucks or a $30 McDonald's. Trust me, little gift cards saying, you know what, I saw you doing that and I really appreciate it. Go so far. And all of a sudden the word's going to get out, wow, I got a Starbucks card just for polishing my wheels. So, um, do you ever go to pickup points? And not to catch somebody doing wrong, but go to pick up, like I was saying with the PGA situation and, and some of these other group moves. Um, you go to the pickup points and see, and then when the drivers are loading the luggage and when they are doing the right things, tell them thank you for doing the right thing. Now, obviously, you do have to discipline if somebody's absolutely smoking around the kids and doing nasty stuff, but that's how you find out. Not find out on Facebook when you go back and read it later. Are they doing a pre trip? I hear so many times, oh, nobody does a pre trip. Well, how many times have you caught the guy doing a pre trip and went out and said, We appreciate the time you took to do the pre trip. I watched you do it, and it was amazing how much you looked at everything. And again, it goes, Oh, well, that's what they're supposed to do. Well, you know what? The carrot thing really works. Go out and catch somebody doing it right. Let them know you saw it, and they'll let others know that you're watching and that you noticed. Have you ever done a skills test or maybe a rodeo? Um, we did one recently. Uh, the insurance company asked us to do it for the bus company. And so we put on a rodeo. We do it for a UMA. Um, we're we're uh, running their rodeo the uh, last couple of years. We'll be doing it again this year. Um, so it's fun for us to do. And I've told the insurance company, I said, I'll make you kind of a prediction that the person who's going to win this rodeo is probably going to be a newer driver. And what? No, I, I can't see how that could be. Well, it was. It was the person who won the rodeo had been one of a newer hire for this company. The reason was. She was a school bus driver, and they do rodeos all the time. And so, yes, she was new to the company, but she had experience doing rodeos and understood that it's not how fast you can go. And that's usually what happens is, is you get the guys that are uh, drivers that are three to five years, I can do this one, back it up. Well, you can't do it going forward, so you ought to be a little slower and, and doing it as a skills. But that's a way of saying, hey, we appreciate the skill that it takes for what you're doing. So, when was the last time you had management training? I do a lot of driver training uh, for companies. I've done a lot of driver training programs. But I can't tell you how many times, or I can tell you how many times I've done management training on how to talk to drivers and what the drivers do, what it's like. Because I've been there, I've been a driver for years, and that's usually what, when I do uh, driver training for companies or set up a driver training program, that's one of the things I hear a lot. Well, you, you've obviously not done this from driving a desk, you've driven a bus, and yes I have, for years and years. That's the first thing I talk about are tips, and they go, oh, I'm going to listen. But management training wise, you know, what's, what kind of how do you talk to people training have you had? Is your company doing birthday recognitions or, again, customer recognitions? Do you have a donut day? I, again, speaking with uh, um, one of the manufacturers, who we were relating about the, the driver room situation. His wife is um, a school bus operator. They have, now in their case, they have really nice seats in uh, the driver room, and they have donut day, or people bring in 
of the stuff day. That's excellent. You know, people feel like they're part of something when people recognize them and, and there's donuts or, or maybe, even if they just do it with each other. Um, what about your website? Now, I haven't looked at everybody's website in here, um, but I can tell you I, I just recently did some work with Windstar Lines, um, so I can talk about theirs. You go to Windstar Lines bus site, uh, bus website, and on multiple pages, you see pictures of drivers. Most of us have pictures of our equipment, which of course when you spend 600000 plus on a bus, you're pretty proud of it. But how many of you are proud of what your drivers look like and proud of, um, the, of them? That's one way of saying, you know what, I, you look really sharp. We're doing some pictures in the next week. Can you come in and in uniform? Uh, we're going to put some new pictures up on the website. It's good for your customers, too. They know that your buses don't ride themselves. What are you saying on Facebook? Are you just saying about our bus is pretty and our bus is great and our bus is well maintained? Or are you putting up there, thank you, Mr. Smith, for taking such and such a group because we got a, a, a nice thank you letter. And we appreciate the work our drivers are doing. Do you mention that on your Facebook page? So, okay, finally, because I know all of you came here to listen to me talk about recruiting. So finally, now that you're a great place to work, Recruiting is a breeze at this point because people want to come and work for you. They want to come and work and stay working for you. So here's the first step. It's that listening thing again, I'm sorry. But grab your top five drivers that you've got and sit them down and say, you know, we're about to do a big recruiting campaign. We want more people like you. Why do you like working here? What brought you to us? How did you find out about us? We want to clone you. And the only way we can legally and officially and scientifically do that is to find more people like you. So how did you find us? Why are you still here? What do you like about us? What don't you like? And are, you know, are your positive comments so that we can find more people like you? And listen. Again, don't get defensive. Oh, yeah, I love it. And, oh, that social media, you know, I don't do Facebook. Well, you know what? Your niece, your nephew, your neighbor's teenager, people do Facebook if you don't. And you can even get a college intern for either free, which I do a lot. Of, um, you can hire college interns. They're looking for marketing experience. They will do it for free in some cases, although... Other people pay them and they'll go there first. But you can get a marketing intern to run your social media program. Be on top of what it is that people are saying and doing and so forth. So get a college intern and uh, or, or your niece, your nephew, or somebody who's really good at staying on top of it to be there. I hate uh, that what happened with Cavallo, but I can tell you on Saturday... Jason Gibbs of the Motor Coach Operators, who is the administrator for that site, wrote, Hey, my people, if your company is hiring and is in the Cabal area, post the listing here so they can find other employment opportunities right away. This was on Saturday, before most of us even knew that Cabal was having an issue. But I knew about it, of course, reading social media. I knew there was something up. So a lot of these comments were like, What's going on? Tell what's happening. And I'm going to pick on Huskies here. Husky Trailways is hiring. Ten minutes. This is 322 or 311. At 322, they had a post up saying we're hiring. We've got health insurance and a retirement plan. Their address. So people are are jumping on that. 29 minutes later, Jamie Crouch from the Decker Operations from Gold Shield Indy Worldwide, full service luxury ground transportation. So here's a limo service in Indiana, uh, Indianapolis saying, we're here, come see us. 
This is on Saturday, not Monday morning at 9 o'clock and let me clear my desk off and let me get past all the phone calls and let me deal with the bus that broke down. On Saturday, they're responding to this. And Busco, or I'm sorry, um, Arrow Trailway, or Arrow, I'm sorry, I used to Trailway Stage, Arrow Stage Lines, to all the work coach operators out there, Arrow Stage Lines is offering $2,000 hiring bonus and up to $5,000 extra relocation bonus, and here's our locations. There's a lot of options, but we pride ourselves in being an industry leader in everything we do. We offer competitive wage, uh, so on and so on. It's there. And again, it was that was there on Saturday. If you're not on Facebook, if your teenager or your niece or nephew or your college intern is not on Facebook, they missed that train. It pulled out on Saturday. Here's the one from uh, motor coach operators. Um, to all the model drivers, we hate to hear what you guys are going through. I know they've already done this, but if your company is in this area and is hiring, this is uh, uh, the administrator again for professional motor coach operators. This is a completely different group than I had in the other one. And here we have Vandalia Bus Lines is hiring. Fill out an application at line. Boom. Person clicks on that, they can go right there. If I was knowing that my job was ending at the end of the weekend and I could have my application in to a new company that weekend before Monday even showed up, you can't do that by just looking at Facebook or not looking at Facebook. And in here, I can tell you that um, last, let's see, Monday night, a driver from Indianapolis who worked for Caballo reported that 95% of the drivers and mechanics uh, have already been picked up by other companies in the Indianapolis area by Monday night. So if you were getting out there going, well, how do we get a hold of these drivers now? Let's, uh, you know, we need to add to our driver pool, so here's a chance to get these guys. <laughs> Missed the bus. Bus pulled out on Saturday. Now, where do we go when we're recruiting for companies? We are using Indeed. That's been good for us and good to us. Craigslist is out there. It's lower down the list. We don't get as many uh, responses as we used to from that. We're getting most of them from Indeed, but I'll tell you what, a good number of them are coming from Facebook. We're out there posting for our companies. Uh, we ask either you give us the access to your Facebook account or tell us who your person is and we make sure we work with them and say, okay, put this on your post today, put this on your post. We could, we don't work with two companies next door to each other, um, so it's, we don't have a problem with that, but you can do it yourself. We do have job fairs. We have found that to be pretty good. There are certain places, and you can have your own job fair. Uh, if you haven't thought about that lately, I'm, lately uh, school bus companies do it all the time. They park a school bus, they put a sign and say, we could uh, use your help on the bus, and people show up at that company for job fairs. We've had a lot of luck going to schools. Uh, fire departments have been good to us. Uh, military has been good to us. Military has the experience, just not the license. And if you have a referral program, have a re that's another opportunity. Tell your drivers we'll pay you X amount of dollars if you bring in someone, but don't cheat them, please. Don't say, oh, yeah, 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 but that person really talked to us about three months ago, so I can't pay the referral bonus because they really, they came to us three months ago before, um, before you start talking because your referral program will be just out the door. Maybe grow your own or pay a scholarship for a truck driver that's going through trucking school. And of course, if nothing else, feel free to call us. We'd love to be of service. Any questions?